Yo, what, are you guys going crazy? What happened? It's a day of celebration. This is a day of joyous celebration. This is a day where Donald Trump is fucking indicted again, dude. Let's, let's get into the goddamn news. news. Holy shit. What are we doing? Inside information. Okay. Let's do it. Or you only look at IG links if it's for reading unhinged comments and never when we link useful shit. You've never linked a useful thing on... You've never... You've ne Oh, yeah. We're going to watch legal, legal videos as well. You've never linked anything useful on Instagram. There's nothing useful on Instagram. It's just thirst traps which I engage in all the time, for the record, okay? Instagram will never offer something useful to you. Uh, the only thing useful is a $5 a month subscription at the top of the hour, which will allow you to send me the unuseful Instagram links because I, for I often forget, but you can send links to me if you are a subscriber. You can also avoid the three-minute ad breaks at the top of the hour if you are a subscriber. Um, here is the three minute ad break now you can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky here's the three minute ad break now let's get started georgia grand jury indicts trump 18 allies in election interference case let's go i know you heard about it about donald trump the former president has been indicted again this time by the state of georgia on charges he and 18 others engaged in criminal conspiracy they are accused of trying to undermine the results of the 2020 election in Georgia, a state that he lost by nearly 12,000 votes. Now, just in case this is all starting to get confusing, we get it. This is the fourth indictment of the former president who is currently campaigning to be president again. And this one is on serious state charges, which means if he were, if he were to be convicted, he could not pardon himself. Nicole Killian is following it all at the courthouse in Atlanta, and she's yep. got the latest for us. Nicole, good morning to you. What can you tell us? Good morning to you, Gail. District Attorney Fonnie Willis has asked all 19 defendants to surrender within the next 10 days, and she wants to try all of them together. This sprawling indictment lays out an alleged Woo! criminal enterprise citing criminal acts here in Georgia and six other states. But Kemp can e easily can and would pardon him. Uh, as far as I understand, the pardoning process in Georgia is not as open and shut. Uh, there is a pardoning board. And also, Brian Kemp himself is not the type of person who would pardon Donald Trump, in my opinion. I mean, he's a, he's a Republican Party cutout, right? And if Donald Trump won the presidency, he would absolutely pardon him if he had the power to do so. I think he's that type of person because Republicans always fall in line. But... But having said that, Brian Kemp himself is not exactly fond of Donald Trump, partially because of what is literally going on in this Georgia case. Because Brian Kemp is the governor of Georgia. Before he was the governor of Georgia, he was the secretary of state of Georgia. And he was an incredibly corrupt, awful demon of a Republican, as is your job if you are the secretary of state in Georgia. It's quite literally to ensure that you're purging people off the voter ballots, you're making sure that there are no polling stations in like black and brown neighborhoods, poor neighborhoods in general. And that, of course, uh, set him up nicely for the gubernatorial race, which he defeated Stacey Abrams in and became the governor of Georgia. So after that happened, Donald Trump, who had pushed for him originally, did the mafioso thing and said, all right, you know, time to help me out. I've been a supporter of yours. Go ahead. Give me votes. Now, he didn't directly say that to Brian Kemp, but uh, he, he has alluded to it with Brian Kemp as well, uh, including other people in the, the Georgia State Administration. Um, now, when Brian Kemp said absolutely not and spoke out against it, which, by the way, makes him not a good guy, okay? I don't think he's a good guy at all. I don't think that this is... I don't think that Brian Kemp... And, and uh, Raffelsberger, or however you say his name, I don't think these are, like, good guys. They're still Republicans, okay? But they are party loyalist Republicans and not necessarily Trump loyalist Republicans. They're party loyalist Republicans who are also smart enough to recognize, like, I don't want to go to fucking jail, okay? So Brian Kemp openly was uh, uh, contentious towards Donald Trump, to which Donald Trump absolutely... Uh, did not take kindly to, and then spent pretty much the last couple of years shitting on Brian Kemp, including trying to set up a primary opponent against him who lost. So 
the reality is that uh, the reality is that there is a uh, you know, there's not exactly a lot of love between Brian Kemp and Donald Trump. So even in a situation in Georgia, uh, as I mistakenly thought, where the governor could pardon you in other because you can do that in other states, I thought maybe. I thought maybe I'm Brian Kemp. Brian Kemp would be the, the, the funny man standing between Trump and freedom uh, because Trump could technically, I guess, pardon himself on federal issues, on federal crimes, but he cannot pardon himself on state crimes. So we'd have to go to Brian Kemp and beg him to pardon him. But that is not the case in Georgia anyway. The governor does not have uh, uh, you know, uh, pardon power in the same way that uh, in other states the governor does. Ultimately... This is all you need to know about Brian Kemp. I'm Brian Kemp. I'm so conservative. I blow up government spending. I own guns that no one's taking away. My chainsaw's ready to rip up some regulations. I got a big truck just in case I need to round up criminal illegals and take them home myself. Yep, I just said that. I'm Brian Kemp. If you want a politically incorrect conservative, that's me. Yeah. So just understand, like, it's not like Brian Kemp is a good guy. Uh, and the reason why I wanted you to understand that, the reason why I wanted you to see that, I like that people are saying fucking gross. First of all, it, I mean, of course it's gross. It's like, that's what conservative politics is, okay? Conservative politics revolves around vice signaling. The only truthful thing that he said in that situation was he's Brian Kemp and also that uh, he wants to deregulate. That's it. Everything else is just like seasoning. Oh, I want to round up illegals in my F-350, in the back of my F-350. It's like, hey, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Anyway, if Brian Kemp had the power and wouldn't pardon Trump, the libs would suck him like they did Liz Cheney. Yes. He also, yeah, he also ironically, and Megaphonics is uh, correct in this, did the classic, yep, I did that. <laughs> That's a lightsaber dude meme, but like in a Republican fashion. He's like, yep, I said that. I said it. Illegals, I'm rounding them up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's racism, dude. Anyway, uh, in 2020, the uh, so Donald Trump posted this said a large, complex, detailed, but irrefutable report on the presidential election fraud, which took place in Georgia, is almost complete and will be presented by me at a major news conference at 11 a.m. on Monday of next week in Bedminster, New Jersey. Based on the result of this conclusive report, all charges should be dropped against me and others. There will be a complete exoneration. They never went after those that rigged the election. They only went after those that fought to find. And I'm not going to clip. I'm not going to get clipped reading that. Okay. Because there's a lot of people out there that uh, desperately work in overtime to try to clip me out of context saying something that even uh, is, is near uh, the N word. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to jump on that. Okay. Not doing it anyway. Um, so this is a, an extension, a continuation of, like, the classic perfect phone call, okay? Perfect phone call. The greatest phone call of all time, which, is, which was perfect. It is perfect, not in the way that Trump thinks is perfect, but it's perfect to show, like, criminal conspiracy and fraud. Um, it's perfect in the sense that uh, in the phone call, he actually said the exact number, for example. Like, he didn't actually ballpark it. He didn't say 12,000. He said 11,780 votes, and then follow that up with one more than we have right now, which is, you know, it is perfect for the fucking district attorney. It's perfect for the prosecutorial team. They're like, oh my God, how perfect is this for us? It's a slam dunk case. Now, I have seen a lot of very funny defenses of this. Uh, classic internet hippo meme comes to mind where uh, he once famously said, a lot of what's happening with conservatism in modern day is basically looking at like crimes and then making it seem as though it's not a crime where they'll, they'll just they'll, like Donald Trump uh, and his defenders are, are saying like, I didn't know it was illegal to just 
make a phone call to a friend on a Sunday afternoon. You know what I mean? It's like, that's not the point. You're, you're, you're saying things that are illegal in the phone call, which is unironically the conservative defense. Now people are basically stating, Oh, it's illegal to say the election was rigged. Wow. Oh my God. They're coming after you too. It's like, no, they're not coming after you, Deborah. They're not coming after you, Hank, okay? Like, it's not illegal to say the election was stolen. You've been saying it non-fucking-stop since the election was stolen from you by Joe Biden. See, I'm saying it too. Joe Biden stole the election from Donald Trump. Sucks to suck. You got got by a fucking corpse, okay? There, there you go. Arrest me, officers. I've said the, the election was stolen, okay? Notice how that's not illegal for me to say. Is it because I'm a libtard? No. It's because I'm not saying it in the act of a criminal conspiracy when I'm giving a clear directive to a person in a position of power to behave a certain way that is illegal. Here, there it is. Um, this is the OG. Ne new right-wing thing is describing crimes as generically as possible to pretend like they're not crimes. Someone gets convicted of conspiracy and they start yelling, wow, so it's illegal to make plans with friends now. That's what they're doing. Making fun of Mike Pence is illegal now, too, says Jack Posobiec. Calling Mike Pence a wimp is now a felony in the communist state of Georgia, says Cat Turd. Fuck yeah. Here's some more. Greg Price says, things that are now illegal according to the Georgia indictment. Asking people for phone numbers. Reserving rooms in Capitol building. Telling people to watch TV. Getting people to attend legislative hearings. It's illegal to rob a bank now. It's illegal... It's illegal to go to a bank now. It's illegal to ask for money at a bank. That's what, that's what this is. That is literally what this is. And you know what? If you were to ask me in like 2014, 2015, I would have said these guys know what they're saying is not true. That they are being deceptive on purpose because they think this is a good way to deflect away from the main point of contention. In 2023... I'm not so sure. I think they are this stupid. I think literally they are this stupid. I think they have bludgeoned themselves in the head with so much entitlement, so much American exceptionalism, so much American individualism, and so much American dogma that I do legitimately think they are this stupid. Like, like the family of the guy in Provo, Utah, who very clearly said, I am going to assassinate the president with my M24 that I'm dusting off right now. I'm going to wear a ghillie suit and I'm going to kill him. He's coming to, the, he's coming to town and I'm going to do all of these things. He said that, right? He posted on Facebook. Then he followed it up by saying, FBI, I know you're watching. You know, come over to my house. I have guns waiting for you. You know, I'll, I'll kill you too. That was an invitation for suicide by law enforcement, okay? That's what that was. Now, Every normal person should understand that. And yet, for some reason, there were conservatives who were saying, no, it's his free speech right. Because I do legitimately think people are that stupid now. I do legitimately believe that people are that fucking stupid now. Okay? You're catching up finally? No, I think that there was always a lot of stupid people. I think that there were always a lot of stupid people. Okay? However... However, I think the thought leaders on the conservative side were maliciously engaging with them. Uh, they were doing it in a cynical way. They were behaving dumber than they actually are because they think it's a de deceiving counter. It's a successful counter. I no longer believe that the thought leaders on the right, for the most part, are actually doing this cynically. I think that they are doing it because they're just as stupid. It's also kind of wild because back in the day, maybe we banned too many people, but back in the day when I used to duke it out about issues like this, there would be a significant number of Trump supporters in here at the very least trying to defend it. And those guys are gone. And I don't know if it's because there's not a lot of momentum or excitement to defend Donald Trump publicly because they recognize that he's fucked. Or I don't know if they just gave up. I don't know if we banned all of them, you know. But it makes me kind of sad. Makes me kind of sad. 
I'll admit. <sighs> it's cynical, but it's their only avenue to argue, so they lost their creative touch. Maybe they're on kick. I don't know. Maybe they died of COVID. I don't know if there is a, there's more of an indication of what the situation is. I don't know if this is a better indication of what the situation looks like because we have seen the real-life examples of this. If Donald Trump was arrested or indicted in, like, 2021, I feel like there would be a tremendous crowd. I feel like there would be so many more people that are out in public defending Donald Trump. And yet, and yet, we don't see them. We don't see them nowadays. And I don't know what the fuck's going on. And I, I've said this before. I think January 6th was uh, definitely uh, the first time where uh, mainstream Republican supporters did something that was truly uh, fucked up in the eyes of the law. And they suffered, um, they suffered the, the consequences of that legally. And they were shocked. And I think they, they legitimately thought that this would not happen to them. Yeah. But they're not out there protesting, and it makes me sad. It makes me sad not to see him. I miss him a little bit. I do. I miss him. Maybe the government should uh, scale back on their militancy towards these bold, beautiful, patriotic Americans. On the other hand, however, here's the Washington Post. Opinion, is Georgia's case against Trump one case too many? I told you this yesterday. I, 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 keep, I keep asking liberals to deliver, and they keep delivering. I was waiting for someone on the liberal side to finally come out and be like, listen, I think we should just let him go. I mean, come on. In the interest of fairness and bipartisanship, we should, we should maybe just let the little guy do a little bit of crime come on but if you slide liberals will always try to go back to this reasonable center that they've cultivated that is not so reasonable okay they'll always try to re-triangulate no matter what happens it's always gonna happen but let's get started let's watch we have so many clips on the docket here uh, we covered what Trump had said. Let's hear some of the details first, and then we'll dive into the reactions. A grand jury in Atlanta returned an indictment that alleges former President Trump and 18 other defendants knowingly joined a conspiracy to unlawfully change the outcome of the 2020 election in the state of... Your boy Ryan Grimm said that with the last indictment, even suggested Biden should pardon Trump if he promised not to run for president. Yeah, that's insane. That would be the dumbest thing that uh, anyone could ever do, especially because that would then cave into all of the, all of the things that uh, Republicans have been claiming, that they're only doing this to stop Donald Trump from running and not because he legitimately has done crimes, which he has. Georgia. The defendants engaged in a criminal racketeering enterprise to overturn Georgia's presidential election result. The indictment was handed up before cameras Monday night after the grand jury heard from a series of witnesses. It culminates a two and a half year investigation by Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis. The indictment includes 41 felony counts and is 97 pages long. The indictment charges 19 people, including Trump, his former White House chief of Who's this lady? What's her name? This is the dish attorney, Fonnie Willis, who is not a great person, in my opinion. I think she's a massive careerist, and uh, she's, she's utilized the RICO uh, chart. She's utilized RICO statutes against uh, teachers. She try, I, I don't know if it was her that specifically tried to use it against the, the Cop City protesters or someone else, but most famously, she's utilized the RICO against YSL, Free Jeffrey, Free slime. Uh, I'm of course referencing Young Thug. Um. So I think that uh, yeah, she's a typical careerist. Uh, Cop City protests are getting Ricos in uh, in Georgia. Yeah, I know, but I don't know if it was her direction or someone else on that. Of staff Mark Meadows, former lawyer Rudy Giuliani, conservative attorney John Eastman, former Justice Department. 
God damn, look at these defendants, dude. This is a sexy-ass list, baby. Rudy Giuliani, John Eastman, Mark Meadows, and our boy Kenneth Cheese, bro. He's back. Jeffrey Clark, Jenna Ellis, Ray Smith III, Robert Cheeley, Michael A. Roman, David Schaefer, Sean Still, Stephen Lee, Harrison Floyd, Trevian C. Cuddy, and, of course, yet another incredible one, Sidney Powell, as we know. This is also from the federal case as well. Some of these are from the federal case. These are some of the other defendants. Um, Kathy Latham, Scott Hall, Missy Hampton. Now, one thing that I will admit, I do love me a good story. I do love me a good story that starts with America's mayor. America's mayor that got to that position after 9-11, but won that mayoral role by being an aggressive prosecutor. That's right. Rudolph Giuliani was a very famous prosecutor. Famous for what? Famous for tackling organized crime. Using what statute? You guessed it. A motherfucking Rico, baby. If there's one guy that knows, if there's one guy that knows Rico's in and out, full circle, we're talking Rudolph Giuliani. You love to see it, folks. How how the mighty have fallen, okay? This is a very fun story for many different reasons. But that is just uh, one that I personally find really hilarious. Uh, one of these people is also a publicist for Kanye West. I don't know exactly which one it is. But that was really funny as well. Um. And, of course, obviously, uh, Fonnie Willis, the DA, uh, also was prosecuting or is prosecuting the YSL case as well. It's Trevian C. Cuddy, which is Kanye's publicist. It's fucking is awesome. Department official Jeffrey Clark and several other Trump allies. The former president is facing 13 <laughs> felony counts, including violating Georgia's RICO Act, a racketeering law used to take down major crime organizations. There's no way we lost Georgia. There's no way. The rigged, that was a rigged election. The investigation. I was looking for some of these names. Harrison Floyd is the leader of the Black Voices for Trump. Oh, I love that. In this picture, a person holds up a sign, Black Voice for Trump, at a march and rally for President Donald Trump. Have you seen this? Oh, is this the Larry King? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something, okay? We're going to get to the reactions. Hold on. Spoilerino, okay? Spoilerino alert. Um, John Eastman, one of Trump's lawyers that got recode, is going to be disbarred as a lawyer next week in Los Angeles court by the state of California. Um... Uh, due to his actions to push false allegations of voter fraud following the 2020 presidential election, the bro Trump attorney now faces 11 disciplinary charges in an ongoing trial taking place in downtown Los Angeles. For the record, I mean, things are not looking good for the Trump people, okay? Especially considering that Donald Trump famously does not care about defending those who have stood by him. And I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I love this shit. I love it. I enjoy it. And you should too. This is a moment where no matter how much of a Maoist third worldist or whatever the fuck you are, you can just sit back and watch a person with profound amounts of power who has been so incredibly and transparently corrupt get what's coming for him by other people that are also uniquely corrupt in their own ways, right? But still... It's, it's like a telenovela. I am libbed up on this day, and I am not ashamed to admit that I'm libbed up on this day. Okay? Yeah. This is my fight song. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm Hillary fucking, I'm Hillary Rodden Clinton. The was first sparked by this January 2021 phone call. You should love it. No, dude. I real life lost most of my direct family to this. I'm tired, bro. What do you mean? What are you, what, what are you talking about? Like, are you talking about COVID or what? Like, are you excited? You should still love it and enjoy it that Donald Trump's going to potentially jail or something. Like, what do you mean? Where then President Trump, as Georgia Secretary of State Republican Brad Raffensperger, to find the votes to win him Georgia. Trump has repeatedly defended the call and denied all wrongdoing. I just want to find uh, 11,780 
votes, which is one more than we have. Rudy Giuliani is one of the defendants. As I've said time and time again in this perfect phone call, which Donald Trump is right, it was a perfect phone call. He very openly states the exact number, one more vote than what he was losing to Joe Biden by. Now, sorry, when you fucking ask that to a person whose who's role and responsibility in the election is, is direct, directly controlling the elections, you're, you're not just simply asking a question. You can't rob a bank and then turn around and be like, I'm just exercising my First Amendment rights. I just wanted to get the money from the bank. What the fuck's going on? As we have used <clears throat> the bank analogy time and time again, it does not also matter whether you legitimately believe that the bank has your money or not. That is not a defense. You can't in your mind think, well, this bank has my money. So I'm going to go to the bank and I'm going to threaten the, the person that works at the bank to give me the money, to put it in a bag. That's still a bank robbery. Okay, and a number that specific is actually, you know, not really Trumpian at all, unless it is for a specific purpose. And that purpose is find these fucking votes for me so I win Georgia. Accused of racketeering and conspiracy for making calls to pressure local officials and making false statements about election fraud before legislative committees. I don't have to be a genius to figure out that those votes are not legitimate votes. His lawyer called the indictment a book of lies. I consider this uh, very unfair, uh, very unjust toward me, but much <laughs> worse toward my country. The indictment also accuses several defendants of harassing and intimidating Fulton County election worker. Any chance he did this in 2016 too? No. How could he have done it in 2016? He was just a real estate guy. He didn't have any fucking power to do this. This is, okay, understand something. What Donald Trump is doing here is not a crime that like a lot of other Americans or the average American can get indicted for because you have to be the president or at least like in contact with the secretary of state or the lieutenant governor of the state that you want to change the election outcomes in. Do you see what I'm saying? That's why whenever people say they came after Trump, they're going to come after you too, buddy. Like that's a silly take. Because if you, okay, if your HVAC business owning father tried to call in to a congressperson's office or the governor's office and said, hey, you better find 11,780 votes right now, and then click, ended the phone call, that's probably not prosecutable. That's, you know, depending on the level of threat that you, your, your HVAC business owner father engaged in, right? But that's entirely different than what Trump was doing. A deliberate attempt. Anyway. Ruby Freeman to falsely confess to election crimes. She testified before the House January 6th Select Committee last summer. Do you know how it feels to have the president of the United States to target you? In a statement, Trump's legal team... This was actually one of the most devastating parts about it, too, for the record. Um, we can, we can cover like a longer part of her testimony, but it was so, it was so sad. It's so sad. There are very real people that suffered. There are very real people that suffered as a consequence of Donald Trump's, uh, schemes. You know what I mean? to target you in a statement trump's legal team accused the da of trying to force through and rush the indictment we look at the facts we look at the law and we bring charges according to the fulton county and the people you know who was like at the leading the helm on the threatening of that uh random lady Rud Rudolph motherfucking Giuliani. So I hope he goes to jail. Giuliani clerk's office, a fictitious document was posted to a website Monday appearing to reveal the charges against the former president, but it was quickly taken down. The DA didn't comment on the post, but said it's an issue for the court. Gail. CBS News legal analyst, that's Ricky Kleeman, and our chief election and campaign correspondent, Robert Costa. Good morning to you both. Ricky, let's start with you. You know, I know a lot of people have indictment fatigue. I keep Yeah, poll workers are just normal people who volunteer and are very sweet, uh, civic-minded people who just want to do something good. Obviously, some of them are freaks now, especially with, like, uh, the, the Trump wave of trying to manipulate every aspect of an election. 
But overall, most poll workers, which, by the way, are Republican in red states, like in, in red districts, like they're still fucking Republican, you know what I mean? Um, they're doing it because they want to make it as accessible as possible. Remember this, Trivian baiting Ruby into a police station? Oh, yeah, I do remember this. Trevian Cuddy, a former publicist for Kanye West, was indicted today for her role of pressuring Fulton County election worker Ruby Freeman, as shown here in this video. Yeah, we did cover this back then. 100%. Yeah, she's fucking freak, dude. Absolute psycho. You are a Yeah, I mean, they Acid Burns uh made uh, a a massive post, effort post on Twitter. I got curious. Here's my sloppy notes. Rudy Giuliani, well known. Johnny's been the Federal Society, Mark Meadows, Conservative Partnership Institute, Kenneth Cheesebro, lawyer, bar certified in uh, California, Florida, MA, New Jersey, New York, Texas. Jeffrey Clark, Chief of Litigation and Director of Strategy for the New Civil Liberties Alliance, NCLA, also recipient of a house raid by the feds. Jenna Ellis, lawyer, bar certified in Colorado, Club Q shooting truther, world's worst Gen X Scorpio. Ray Smith III, lawyer, bar certified in Georgia, the least prepared Eagle Scout. Robert Cheeley, lawyer, bar certified in GA, American Association of Justice member. Michael Roman, treasurer at the International Democratic Union, ran an in-house intelligence unit for the Koch brothers. David Schaefer, Ex-Georgia State Senator, Twitter subscriber to Ian Miles Chong. <laughs> That's funny. Sean Micah Treasure Still, dude has four names and no easily discernible web presence. Stephen Lee, a.k.a. Rever uh, Reverend uh, Stephen Cliffgard Lee, a police chaplain who currently leads a suburban Chicago Lutheran church. Harrison Floyd, member of Black Voices for Trump, self-described entrepreneur. Trevian Cuddy, former publicist of Kanye West, obvious girl boss, self-proclaimed media manipulator. Sydney Catherine Powell, disgraced Texas lawyer, Dominion Voting Systems truther. As you guys know, Sydney Powell is one of the goats. Uh, Self-described theories that are pretty wackadoo. Kathleen Latham, former Coffee County uh, GOP chairwoman, terrible at noticing surveillance cameras, fake elector. Scott Hall, poll watcher, such a genetic name. Missy Hampton, Coffee County member, helped with machine interference. The International Democratic Union is the right-wing counter to the Socialist International, by the way. I love that. The liberals were like, we should do our own socialist international. That's fire. It's just called every facet of, of uh, Western liberal democracy, but I guess they wanted their own little club on top of that. <clears throat> the hogs are so sad. Can't wait to see them throw a temper tantrum. Honestly, the hogs are sad, but temper tantrums is one that I expected as well, and yet for some reason it's not coming, at least in public. They're just chirping on TikTok for the most part and and are almost doing it just to garner attention and support from other hogs that are also on TikTok. Back in the day, back in the day, they would chirp on TikTok nonstop, but then they'd also kind of storm the halls. They would get together. This was a community activity for them. They've turned into fucking internet slacktivists. They are, in some ways, doing the 
the uh, black Instagram block for BLM. Hog energy used to actually lead to on-the-ground momentum. That was a big difference uh, that, that, uh, that you immediately noticed when, when comparing Donald Trump to any other candidate. Think about it. Donald Trump could always fill up a stadium. Okay? Now, you know, you'll get a lot of likes if you say Civil War, even though, I mean, look, I dunked on Tim Pool uh, last night. I saw this and I was like, I have to make fun of this. This is so stupid. Um, Tim Pool said Civil War only got 4,000 likes. I say, imagine going to Civil War over Rudolph Giuliani alongside the 25 other frees that were bored enough to go to the Trump courthouse protest. It's like, it, it, it's not even getting you the clout that it normally did. It once did. The momentum is dull. How were they able to mobilize for January 6th? Did they not want to organize in fear of being arrested? Two reasons, and I have said this so many times. Two reasons as to why January 6th is not happening again in these situations. Number one, and perhaps most important, January 6th happened with astroturfed instruments that the Republican Party regularly utilizes that are currently not working at the behest of Donald Trump anymore. You forget, the Republican Party isn't just politicians and the Republican voters. The Republican Party is comprised of a shit ton of, uh, of, of think tanks and institutions that you've never heard of and some that you have like ALEC and, and you know, Turning Point USA that is a more uh, famous uh, version of this that actually uh, bust people in to D.C. that made it easier for people to get angry in one specific location. Now, that's not really happening. The, the, the money that was backing Donald Trump is not necessarily backing Donald Trump in the same way any longer. Uh, we saw this. There was a, an alternative conference that occurred uh, after Donald Trump had announced his uh, presidential run uh, last year. There was another conference that was happening alongside CPAC where uh, I think it was either RNC or CPAC. Which one was it? Where all the big ticket donors, the Koch brothers and the like, actually brought Ron DeSantis, who at the time had not announced that he was running for president, as a speaker during RNC where Donald Trump was speaking. If you got all of the think tank owning billionaires sitting back and waiting uh, to see the outcome of this uh, primary and refusing to pump AstroTurf dollars into Donald Trump and Donald Trump doesn't have that same juice and momentum that he did in 2016 as an outsider candidate who says it like it is, all of a sudden you're arriving at a different problem. Now, the second reason why January 6th uh, is unlikely to happen again is because it already happened and Republicans for the first time realize that even if you are a uh, white business owner from a southern state where you normally in your little town are untouchable and could utilize law enforcement like your own private brand of mercenaries, well, that's not the case when you go and storm the Capitol. Not necessary. You don't have that level of entitlement uh, uh, that translates to, to uh, practice when you do actually uh, go and, and storm the halls of Congress. It was a come-to-Jesus moment for a lot of people that thought before that they could get away with doing whatever kind of fucking crime that they wanted to, whatever kind of ruckus that they wanted to cause. So I think that that definitely had a chilling effect. They realized that their privilege only extended so far which I think stopped a lot of Americans uh, as a deterrent, stopped a lot of Americans from participating in activities like this. Um, here it is, by the way. Got to post this. Obviously, Trevian Cuddy. Among those who threatened Ruby Friedman was Trevian Cuddy, an alleged Kanye associate and former publicist for R. Kelly and a friend of Candace Owens. Here she is on the private jet with the My Pillow guy. I suspect the Michael Pillow guy no longer is, uh, has that private jet. Let's watch. Breaking down Trump's fourth indictment. Let's hear what the liberals have to Hearing say, and then we'll get to the fun stuff. One, 
Help us understand how this one is different. We keep hearing this one is different and this one is more serious. I have always said the Georgia case was the most serious. Well, you've got a 90 page more. A well, 90 it's page here, plus all 98 pages of it, and it has that infamous RICO count. Hmm. And the reason that this case is so serious is when you have a RICO count that's racketeering, influence, corrupt organizations. It was used originally for the mob, that was why it was created. And what you have is a mandatory minimum sentence for anyone who's convicted. It's a punishment of five to 20 years. So there's no walk away from this. There's no probation on this if any one of these 19 defendants is convicted. Donald Trump has been able to say that the federal government is weaponized against him. Fanny Woolis, Fannie Willis, as the DA, is not part of the federal government. And one of the things that we note here is that her work in being so, so thorough, under RICO, you have all of these acts that have to constitute a, a racketeering enterprise with acts. And you have yeah. to convict them of at least two acts. Hmm. She's got 161 acts. And she's got 19 co-defendants. What are the challenges or the advantages, if there are such a thing, of trying that many people. I've tried, that seems cumbersome, too. It's very cumbersome. I've tried cases involving many, many defendants. I don't think I've gotten as far as 19, but I certainly have gotten over 12. And what you have to remember is timing. Donald Trump says, why did all this take so long? Well, they weaponized the Justice Department against me. Well, here, if you thought this took long, wait till you see how long this trial starts. Yeah. You're going to have to bring all these people in to be arraigned. But when you get to trial, you have 19 lawyers who can question jurors, who can question witnesses. This is a long trial. Yes, it is, Ricky. Um, Bob, let's bring you in here. How does this Georgia case fit into the broader January 6th storyline? Nate, it's good to be with you. We've been following the January 6th story for so long, and what's important to understand about Georgia is that it's a microcosm for understanding what happened after the election in 2020. Trump and his allies seized on different states as a path to stay in power. Georgia, perhaps unlike any other, they saw a red state that they could try to nudge in their direction to get the legislature to buy in. Election officials, they called up on the phone and said, try to help get us the votes. And they used Georgia as a way to really keep Trump in the White House on January 6th by using the veneer of alleged voter fraud, which never existed, as a, as, as a means of doing that. And, and all the Trump characters who are part of the January 6th story at a federal level are now going to be coming to Fulton County, to Atlanta, to be on camera as part of, the, as part of this proceeding. Bob, indicted in Georgia, he's also campaigning in Georgia. What's the impact on the Trump campaign there? The big decision former President Trump has to make in the coming days is when is he going to arrive to be arraigned in Fulton County, and will he do that before or after the Republican debate next week in Milwaukee, and will he even show up at the Republican debate? So many of his rivals are wondering if he's going to show up. For now, Trump allies tell CBS News he's leaning against showing up in Milwaukee and instead is focusing on rallying his own supporters as he faces down all of these indictments. He has the records case on you gotta do it, pussy. in Florida on a federal level, the January 6th case, the New York hush money payments case, and now the Georgia election case. We have no shortage of things to mm -hmm. keep track of now. Yeah. Bob Costa, Ricky Kleeman, thank you to you both for trying to sort it out for us. And here is Fannie Willis, who I do not like, who's doing at least a good thing in this situation. Let's take a look. Thank you for joining us. I'm here with the prosecutors and investigators who have worked diligently on the investigation of criminal attempts to interfere in the administration of Georgia's 2020 presidential election. Today, based on information developed by that investigation, a Fulton County grand jury. So when does this guy get arrested? Before next Monday when he totally exonerates himself and proves the election fraud or after? Thank you. Thank you so much.
This is what I'm talking about, dude. Finally. Fuck! He's being sarcastic. God damn it! I got so excited. I thought it was I thought we had a fucking Trump Republican in the chat. Where have they gone? Where are they? I'm I'm genuinely thinking about doing a mass unban. The problem is like the problem is the hyper online individuals that are Republican have become like extremely uh, groped up weirdos who like Ron DeSantis and and white nationalism. So like I don't want to unban those guys. Those guys fucking suck. Back in the day, there was, like, the normie conservative who was like, Trump's your president, and you should love it, libtard. You know what I mean? Like, the normal Republican who is a Trump supporter has, has gone away. They're gone. Returned a true bill of indictment, charging 19 individuals with violations of Georgia law arising from a criminal conspiracy to overturn the results of the 2020 <sighs> presidential election in this state. The indictment includes 41 felony counts and is 97 pages long. Please remember that everyone charged in this bill of indictment is presumed innocent. Specifically, the indictment brings felony charges against Donald John Trump, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani, John Charles Eastman, Mark Randall Meadows, John Cheesebro, Jeffrey Clark, not Cheesebro, Jenna, no, Lynn Ellis, Ray Stallings Smith the Third, Robert David Cheeley. Michael A. Roman, David James Schaefer, Sean Micah Tresher Steele, Stephen Cliffguard Lee, Harrison William Prescott Floyd. I think a big part of why there's like so many co conspirators is also because you flip them. You can flip them, you know, like Gunna. She already has a lot of practice with that. Flip them to get the cheese, you know, the rats that come crawling out of the woodwork. And the reality is Donald Trump himself is the king rat. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't give a shit about any of the other people that have ever worked with him. So if you work for Donald Trump, why don't you flip on him, right? Like you have to. He would do the exact same to you. Governor Kemp tweet, we already read it. Yeah. The 2020 election in Georgia was not stolen for nearly three years now. Anyone with evidence of fraud has failed to come forward under oath and prove anything in a court of law. Our elections in Georgia are secure, accessible, and fair, and will continue to be as long as I'm governor. The future of our ca- uh, country is at stake in 2024, and that must be our focus. Part of the reason why Brian Kemp is also saying this is because, newsflash, if you make voting is actually unfair and it's totally fraudulent, your main point to try to draw a larger crowd, you're probably not going to get a lot of people to go out and vote. You're literally depressing voter turnout. You're depressing voter turnout by constantly saying your vote doesn't matter, your vote doesn't matter, your vote doesn't matter. That's what's going on. A lot of people don't want to vote anyway because it's like a chore. It's, it's made as difficult as possible by uh, the, the Republican Party and the Democratic Party also it kind of takes advantage of that every now and then. But ultimately, ultimately, Voting is not easy to do in this country. It's it's complicated, especially in comparison to other countries. So constantly railing against mail-in ballots, for example, constantly railing against initiatives that make it easier to vote, for example, is going to depress turnout. 
And your expectation is that it'll depress Democratic Party turnout, which is true. Especially when done correctly, this has been a major strategy for the Republican Party uh, to, to win state elections, to win local elections, and certainly to win the presidency by the Electoral College, right? Implementing new measures all the time, uh, shutting off polling stations uh, in, in black and brown neighborhoods, poor neighborhoods that historically vote Democrat, making it as hard as possible for the working class to vote by, making, by refusing to, to make it a national holiday to go out and vote. I was talking to my French friend, uh, Squeezy, earlier today about uh, voting in America. And, and he was shocked when he found out that, uh, you know, it's on a Tuesday. It's like, what? I was like, yeah, it's a work day. Shocked. He didn't understand it. How do you respond to conservatives who claim the only reason the fraud evidence hasn't been proven in a court of law is because every time they've tried, they've been dismissed on a lack of standing, what they claim is a technicality? I mean... I don't know how to respond to that. It's, it's, in a way, it's no different. You can have, you can make any kind of erroneous, ridiculous, made-up claim. There is, a, there is a real reason for why um, these courts in our criminal justice system have, a, have that procedure in place. It's to hand wave away it's to hand wave away ridiculous claims such as that. And it's not always for a lack of standing for the record. There are certainly certain, uh, there are certainly cases that have been uh, pushed aside by the courts for a lack of standing. But you're, what you're talking about is, is coming in the aftermath of multiple recounts, hand recounts, electronic recounts. Like, you can't do that. I'm a lawyer and can respond. They lost on other issues too, not just standing, unwarranted delay, latches, etc. Anyway. And by the way, half of the judges that have dismissed these ridiculous lawsuits aren't even Democrats. They're not libs. Most of these guys, especially in the states that Trump is pushing these lawsuits, are Trump appointees or lifelong Republican judges so like the idea that we have to go and find someone who like you know sleeps with a trump blanket on and only then can we find uh true justice in this world is already a silly one but it's one that republicans already operate under right the notion that like well the only time you can truly try Anybody is if a Republican is the one doing it, right? It's a meme in Washington at this point. But nowadays, even if it's a Republican or a Trump appointee, it doesn't matter because if it doesn't go in the direction that Trump wants it to go, then it's still fraudulent. I mean, how, yeah, witnesses in this situation in Georgia are fucking Republicans, okay? They're Republicans. They're lifelong Republicans. The lieutenant governor who's a key witness in this case, is a Republican, okay? He's the Republican lieutenant governor, or was the Republican lieutenant governor. There's also some additional information here. A state agency is moving ahead with plans that will determine whether Lieutenant Governor, uh, lieutenant governor Burt Jones faces criminal charges as a part of the scheme to overturn, overturn the 2020 presidential election in Georgia, D. Wickard reports. Jones is one of 30 people who prosecutors said participate in a conspiracy to overturn the election. Like, this is the current lieutenant governor. The former one was a key witness. Jones had served as a fake GOP elector, supported lawsuits that sought to void the 2020 election, and pressed Vice President Mike Pence to reject the official results. The lib judge jury jurisdiction argument is so funny to me. All these indictments are in places where Trump has committed the crimes. New York City, D.C., Florida, Georgia. So maybe Trump should stop committing crimes in liberal jurisdictions. Yeah, except... Some of those places are not liberal jurisdictions like Florida or even Georgia. That's the hilarious part about this is like the idea that Georgia is like a deep blue state is so funny when like it was somewhat of an upset. You know what I mean? Like when did Georgia become this beacon of, a, you know, democratic prosperity all of a sudden? It's so fucking stupid. And Florida is not liberal at all. But they basically 
want to only be tried in like a West Virginia district that was like plus 65 Donald Trump with like eight people that are all related to one another and a thousand fucking cows that live in the district. That's it. That's the only time it can be true justice is when the outcome is what I want it to be. Any other outcome is injustice. That's what it is. These people are entitled babies. Here is an example. Train derailments, all of our food factories, processing plants, burning down or closing down. Majority of the world is on fire right now. Look at the map. What's happened in Hawaii was a direct attack. I know that in my heart. It's not going to stop. She knows it in her heart. She knows in her heart. You can't change your mind. At the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break, and she knows in her heart she's not going to see it, okay? But she will, unless she's subscribed. But she, it don't matter. She'll look at the ad break, and she'll go, I don't care. Don't see it in my heart of hearts. I know it's not true. It is true. At the top of the hour, there is a three-minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free, or by getting gifted a sub like Psychedelic Gazelle, which gifted 10 gifted subs to allow 10 people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Here's a three-minute ad break now. Yeah, she knows. She knows it was lasers. I know it in my heart. It was a direct energy weapon. Mountain Dew, I stopped drinking that garbage. Let me tell you something. Mountain Dew is somehow involved. PepsiCo. Everything is a grand conspiracy except for the grandest conspiracy of all, which is capitalism. Damn, this guy's good.